this, and Dukakis now became the big guy, and he was the opposite party I was with, but I made friends with him, and you know, he came and he appointed me the chairman. <laughs> <laughs> and I was the chairman for him, but then I went to another uh, term than that of seven years, and I went with well, and they kept me as the chairman. So all I'm saying is that it all came right from here, and uh, <laughs> I appreciate it very much. Uh, I, I, I just got to tell you another funny story. Uh, this, this, is, this is my introduction to football. This, we're going back in the 1951, 52, 53. My parents came from the old country in 1923, and they were as old-fashioned and back in the dark ages as you'd ever want to think. They never spoke English. We were poor. We had a three-decker house on Pleasant Street. And while I was in junior high school, in those days, there was 7th, 8th, and 9th, and then 10th, 11th, and 12th. It was a junior high school in the high school. There wasn't a middle school there. And in the junior high school, they never played football. They didn't have all, that, all the things they have today. So I was working on a farm then. I worked five years on a farm. So when it came time, I went to Watertown High. Uh, <coughs> my mother says to me, I said, no, son, I'm not going to go to work tomorrow because mm -hmm. what it was that you started football like four days before you started school. It was like the Labor Day weekend. My mother says, you know, she says, you can't play football. Only people who play football who people who are lazy and don't want to do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so I says, no, Ma, I, I got to play football. I says, you know something, you, you, you can't. So we argued back and forth, and I didn't win the argument. But the next day, I didn't go to work, and I walked up to the football field. And it was a victory field, and in those days, they didn't have the new clubhouse, they were just building it. <coughs> and I'll never forget that. There had to be 150 kids, there was five coaches. I mean, the place is, you know, Watertown was, was, was a great place and very enthusiastic sport people. So when you got there, all the young guys, the first starters, they didn't have any access to the equipment. What they did, they used to throw all the shoulder pads in one pile, all the knee pads in another pile, all the pants in another pile, the shoes in another pile. So the biggest kids got the best equipment. You know, we all fought for whatever we could get. And half the stuff didn't fit, half the stuff fit. But anyway, we got finally outfitted. And we're out there scrimmaging. And geez, I, I, I see it like it, was, it, it happened yesterday. <laughs> I'm sitting in the field, and i never forget, the fellow next to me, was, his name was Dingy Delden, but he passed away now. And, uh, sitting there and I looked down and I, Jesus, I said, that can't be her. It can't be her. And I says, my God, no, I can't. And I'm sweating. And she's coming and I, you have to picture my mother. I love her dearly. <laughs> she was a great lady. I was telling you, she was really great. And uh, she's walking down and she was maybe weighed about 175 pounds. She was in great shape with a bun. And <laughs> she used to have two handkerchiefs of, uh, wrapped around her bra strap one handkerchief was with the money, and the other handkerchief had the keys. <laughs> so, she's so this is a true story. She's walking out, and she's calling the coaches, bums, go get a job. <laughs> in Italian. <laughs> uh, yeah, this was an Italian. She's yelling at the coaches. And she says, all oh, you kids, go get a job. Do something with yourselves. And she's yelling and screaming. And, Nobody understood it except there was a coach, Joe Mantenuto, was the uh, backfield coach at the time. He was an Italian guy. And he understood it. <laughs> he was in hysterics. <laughs> he was just, he was a funny guy. But anyway, she walks up to me. I couldn't run because I was in shock. <laughs> <laughs> she slaps me over the head, grabs me by the ear, and she walks me off the field. So I says, holy Christ. Anyway. <laughs> I went home, and I ran away for a couple of days. My brother let me use his car, and we went to Old Orchard Beach with a bunch of guys, and you know what crazy. Then I came back, and I went to my first day of school. <coughs> but I did end up, everybody convinced that I had to play football, and I did play. But I'll never forget, I, the first day at Watertown High, I'm walking down a corridor with my books, and I hear the kids say, hey, that, that's the kid. His mother came out in my football. <laughs> <laughs> you got to get him. 
I says, holy Christ, I says, I gotta stop this. So I put my book down, I walk over there, and I get in a fight with the kid. <laughs> McNeely was the dean of boards at the time. He comes running out, I never met the guy. He comes running out and he says, what's going on? He says, the kid's on the ground, and we're fighting that stupid. Anyway, I really, he says, go home. <laughs> I got thrown out of school the first day I was at Watertown High. <laughs> <laughs> In those days, it penalizes you. You gotta stay out three days, you gotta stay out two days, whatever it was. But anyway, that, that was my first introduction to, to football. But you know, I have to say it, and I don't wanna bore you guys, and I don't wanna keep this up, but I gotta tell you one more story about it. <laughs> <laughs> In my senior year, we were playing Ridge Tech. And that was a school of 2,000 boys. And every boy there was bigger than anybody on our team. They were a really a tough, tough team. So we're playing, we're playing them, and uh, we were beating them, by the way. And I was a tackle, I was in the line. And I rushed in the first down, and I sacked the quarterback. And they'd be like, hey, 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 sack the quarterback. So, we go back, and I get kind of a little cocky the second time, and I said, I get this guy again. Because the guy in front of me was twice my size, but he couldn't move fast enough. And I, I stuck in front of him, and I got the quarterback again the second time. Got him down. Now I'm really cocky. I said, holy jeez, this is easy. <laughs> now, the third time, I go through, and they're waiting for me. They're trapping. One guy's behind me. hit me with a fist in his elbow, knocked me out, broke my nose, because we didn't have no face pads then, I don't even got helmets. But we had, <laughs> the nose was on this side of the face, I passed out, I was out. And I'm sitting, and I'm laying there, now this was the first game my mother came to. <coughs> and <laughs> and, uh, and she was, you know, in, in those days, uh, we had a good crowd. We used to get three, four, five thousand people, a lot of people there. And she's up on the bleachers. And I'm laying there, and I couldn't hear nothing because I was out. I was all like a light, but I did hear her. <laughs> <laughs> she comes running down, and she's yelling at this kid, you son of a bitch, squeeze them if he did. <laughs> he says, squeeze them if he did, and she's running out in the field. And I, you know, and I could hear her. I says, oh, jeez. And I woke up. <laughs> <laughs> she comes running out in the field. Two guys grab me, you know, and they grab me, and she's yelling at the kid that did it, and she's yelling at the team, and I mean, it was just, it was crazy. <laughs> so we walk across the field, and we go in the clubhouse. She comes in the clubhouse. <laughs> and thank God for Dr. Mastrangelo. Dr. Mastrangelo, he, he was Italian, he, he, could, he could calm it down. We get in the clubhouse, and they're taking my clothes off, and I'm bleeding like crazy, right? My mother's in the clubhouse, in a boy's clubhouse. Daughters, you gotta get out of here. You can't do it. They finally got her to get out of there. Thank God. But that's that was my mother. And I I, I, I gotta tell you, it was an experience of my life. Uh, but I, I I won't bore you anymore. I, I just I, I appreciate you letting me speak here and I tell you, you know something? I've probably got up in front of a microphone maybe fifty times over the years and uh, I don't think I've ever spoken more than thirty seconds, one minute. Here, I speak in maybe three or five minutes. I, I, you know, and, and I feel comfortable. This is, this is amazing. <laughs> Thank you very much. I really appreciate it.